Hello boys, I haven't got my usual funky microphone so it might be a little bit of a struggle to hear me and my internet is rubbish so this might be a really rubbish video to listen to but I thought I'd very quickly talk you through a source essay on Elizabethan England and faction which I would like you to do this week. So we're doing our Elizabethan paper now and the Elizabethan paper is mixed up of a blend of two skills. It's mixed up of a blend of source skills but also interpretation skills. So as you can see we have five questions on the Elizabethan paper. Question one which we've already had a go at will give you two sources and you have to write four sentences judging the source and what you can learn from the source. Question two, which we're going to focus on today, is source accuracy, which is eight marks. Then we have a knowledge-based question, which is on the significance of an event or a figure in Elizabethan history. Question four is really, really difficult. It's a 10 mark question where you have to make links between different areas of history. We will get there and we will have a go at doing that at some point in the future, but we'll do that later once we're a little bit more specialized in Elizabeth. And then finally, we have our interpretations question, which has a, the exact same structure and style as the one that you have already tried for Germany. I'm fairly sure you could hear a motorbike there, so I do apologize. Right, question two, asks us about accuracy. So let's imagine we have this question based upon the content that we've been looking at recently. So to what extent does this source accurately reflect faction in the Elizabethan court? So we have this source. So it's by a man called Robert Naunton and he's a member of Elizabeth's court and he's reminiscing on living at the court of Elizabeth in the 1630s. So that's 27 years after she's died. And he says, she's ruled much by factions and parties, which she made, upheld and weakened as her own great judgment advised. So what he's saying in a nutshell is her court was dominated by faction. So with this question, we are going to need to do two things. First of all, we're going to have to use our knowledge. So you can see you get two marks for your knowledge. So that's two marks for how well you evidence your understanding and give examples of factions. And the second area is our ability to analyse sources for their accuracy. So we want to get to the top band. We want to get a five or a six band three. So we need to analyse and evaluate the accuracy of the source. We need to set it within the context of the historical events studied. So for example, if you you get a source which is about Elizabethan Catholicism and you're banging on about Puritanism and Protestantism because you've gotten confused and you think that the Catholics were Puritans which is completely wrong then you haven't contextualized your source so you won't be able to get into that top band so we need to really show our understanding of faction and how it works at the court of Elizabeth we need to look at the strengths and limitations of the source material so we need to use our knowledge to think about strengths and weaknesses, but we also need to think about the author and how he strengthens or weakens the source. And then finally, we need to come to a substantiated judgment. Substantiated judgment just means that not only have you talked through the source, not only have you brought in your own knowledge, not only have you analysed the author, you've then finally come to a judgment that links to what you've said. There's no point saying that the source is really weak all the way through and then coming to a judgment where you say it's accurate. That's unsubstantiated. To substantiate something is to back it up with evidence. So that's what we need to do. So in a nutshell, this is what we need to do. We need to clearly identify what is being said in the source and the area of history that is being referred to. We need to contextualise the source with a range of knowledge. We need to use lots of examples. We need to consider the author. So who was writing, when, why, what is the purpose of the source? How does the author impact on accuracy? Our guy is writing nearly 30 years after Elizabeth died. He's not necessarily going to be that accurate. And what is your judgment? Okay, so looking at our source, she's ruled much by factions and parties. So what our guy is saying is that the Elizabethan government, the Elizabethan Privy Council, which some of you got confused in that quiz, the Privy Council was that group of men whose job was on a nearly day-by-day -day basis, there goes the P30, on a nearly day-by-day -day basis, it was their job to advise Elizabeth and help her run the country. So this source is saying that within the Privy Council, but also within her court, there were lots of factions, there were lots of fighting, and that she either helped to produce them, 
that's basically it. So in a nutshell, there's lots of faction and she's kind of using them, increasing them. So what we need to think about is this source is telling us there's faction. We need to bring in examples of factions. It's saying there there were much factions. So we're going to bring in William Cecil versus Robert Dudley. The fact that William Cecil and Robert Dudley disagreed on who she should get married to. They disagreed on whether England should go to war or not. Robert uh, Robert Dudley was pro-war. William Cecil was against it. They also disagreed on religion. William Cecil was a moderate Protestant, okay? Robert Dudley was a Puritan, which meant he was a really, really extreme Protestant who believed that after the religious settlement, which Elizabeth created, which was kind of a middle way between Protestant and Catholicism, Robert Dudley was actually more pro, going even further Protestant towards Puritanism. So these are ideas we can bring in. We can bring in evidence of these factions. We can also talk about Robert Dudley's stepson, Robert Devereux, who's known as the Earl of Essex, so you can just call him Essex, and the fact that he didn't go on with and argue with Robert Cecil, who's William Cecil's son. We can talk about the use of patronage. We know, for example, that Elizabeth gave Robert Dudley the role of the master of the horse. We also know that William Cecil was given the title of Lord Burley, that he was made her private secretary, and that he became Lord Treasurer. So she gives both of these men positions at court, but it means that they're always in competition with each other. We also then need to start to look at the author. It's really true that there was a fair bit of faction, but it's not necessarily a negative thing because actually Elizabeth liked faction because it stopped her making key decisions. Like she never wanted to get married. So the fact that William Cecil and Robert Dudley were always fighting over who she should get married was actually used quite well by her. Um, What I would talk about, though, is let's look at the author, Robert Norton. I've never heard of him. I had to look him up. If you've never heard of him and he's not on the specification and he's not in the textbook, we can use our historical inference skills to say that he probably wasn't a very famous courtier and he certainly wasn't a privy councillor. So he's probably quite frustrated by faction and Elizabeth using patronage because he never gets any. He never gets anywhere. So that's going to flavour his writing. He's also writing in 1630, which is 27 years after Elizabeth has died. And finally, in the reign of the Stuarts, so in the reign of James I onwards, it became really, really popular to critique Elizabeth and cast her reign, because she was a woman, in a really unflattering light. So these are all things we need to think about. So you need to have a go at answering this question. So to what extent does this source accurately reflect faction in the Elizabethan court? So what I want you to do is use this framework. So you're going to say, first of all, the source written by Robert Norton in 1630 states, and you're going to tell me what the source is about. Quote from the source, summarise it. Then, from my own knowledge, bring in your evidence that there was a lot of faction, that Elizabeth used it. Additionally, Elizabeth used faction to her, I don't know, to her personal advantage because blah, 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 blah. Bring in some evidence of the patronage that she gave. Talk about the fact that William Cecil was Sir William Cecil at the start of her reign in 1558 and by 1571 had been given the title Lord Burley and brought that magnificent house, Burley House, which I put in your quiz. Then talk about the author. So talk about the fact that the author is Robert Norton, that he's kind of a nobody, that he wasn't a privy councillor, that he was probably a bit frustrated and that he was writing in the 1630s. However, you might want to say, but there was quite a lot of faction at the court of Elizabeth. And then finally come to your conclusion. I'm probably going to say that it's accurate in that there was faction in the reign of Elizabeth, and that it is accurate that she used it to her advantage. However, the tone of the source is a little bit negative. It, It makes it sound like it's a bad thing, when actually it was quite the positive. Okay, I'm going to set this for you on Microsoft Teams. So I want you to type this up on Microsoft Teams, your answer, uh, and then I'll mark them, give it back to you. And in our live lesson, I'll go over some of the key issue areas that we've had so far. All right.